These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. I'll tell you what, that is really nice. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. I think it's sorely missing a bit of sauce. Give it some zing, some life. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. We are on a quest to uncover real cookery talent. Somebody who is going to be a colossus of the culinary world in the future. This competition is hard. It's stressful. Yes, I'll give you that. But to work in a real Michelin kitchen, that's very, very hard. In today's show, the professionals will be set three gruelling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarter-final. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, mm. then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. Today's skill test is to join the chicken into eight, and the palate test is to make chicken goujons. I hope these guys can hold their nerve. If they start to panic, you can see it all go wrong. So do I. 24-year-old sous chef Sam was a schoolboy tearaway before he discovered cooking eight years ago. I just completely and utterly love food and love making it look beautiful, love making it taste great and love making customers happy. Your 10 minutes start now. Focus, off you go. To be able to cook for Michelle Rue is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Just to learn what I'm doing wrong and learn what I'm doing right. You've only got two minutes. Time's up. Turn the heat off. Right, Sam, you did manage to join the chicken. Yeah. That was, I have to say, that was well done. But unfortunately, you've wasted. Yeah, no. If Michelle was to see that, he would not be pleased at all. That's money in the bin. I did it backwards. I should have taken the breasts off before the legs. Let's move on to your palate test, which is your goujons. Yeah. That looks nicely cooked. For me, that was lovely and moist. Um, it's just a bit salty because you've seasoned it last moment. No, not bad. Chicken's beautifully cooked, it's really moist. It could do with a little bit more crisp around the outside. Yeah. Sam, thank you very much. Off you go. I don't think I'd impressed them that much. I'd made a few very basic little mistakes. I know I can do better than that. I'd just like to have the chance to prove it, really. Scotsman Bryce started his chefing life at 13, working in kitchens as a Saturday boy. Now he's determined to get to the very top of his profession. 
I like to cook, I'm passionate about what I do. If I was to win the competition, hopefully my career would just take off. 10 minutes, off you go, Bryce. It would be an acid test for myself to cook for Michelle Rougenia. And if he was to appreciate something that I'd cook, then it would just be a dream come true. You've got less than two minutes now. Time's up, Bryce. I'm afraid you've run out of time. Bryce, first, let's start with your skills test. I was very impressed uh, with how you jointed the chicken. You popped the joints, very tidy. Your knife skills, very precise. Your goujons were looking wonderful. Nicely uniform in size. Unfortunately, you've run out of time. We have nothing to test. Stumble at the first hurdle. Bryce, we'll get you back in as soon as we can. I'm gutted. The things I was asked to do were relative, were very simple, and I didn't complete it. Twenty-three-year-old South African George came to the UK to develop his passion for cooking. In South Africa, we have no mission stars. My ambition is to be the first South African with a mission star restaurant. Hey, George, 10 minutes, off you go. I always want to add more flavour and just stand out and just be different from all other chefs. You've got three and a half minutes left. That's it. Time's up, unfortunately, they're not cooked. George, right, let's first uh, look at jointing the chicken. You actually managed to get it off the bone, but look, yes. you don't want to accidentally cook that off with the string still attached okay. to yes. the meat. Your palate test, we didn't get to try it because it's yeah. still in the pan. Yes. You had 10 minutes to do the two tasks. You okay. should have been able to complete it. It's unacceptable. Michelle would not have been pleased with that. I went 50-50. I could have done a little bit better. We'll see how the other guys do. Last up is 22-year-old Damien, who quit university two years ago for a career in the kitchen. It's just brilliant. I love being in the kitchen. The boys, your mates, the best mates, your chefs, and it's like being at home with your family, you know. I like it. Ten minutes, Damien. Good luck. Off you go. There are things I've worried about doing only because I haven't been to Catering College. I've always given 110%, so I will try my hardest. You've had three minutes. Is it off the chicken? No, sorry, it might be me. I must have just swiped it through. You've had five minutes now, Damon. Less than one minute. Time's up, I'm afraid. That's it. Time is up. Right, Damien, you started off really well until you nicked yourself one, two, three times okay. too many and then you just seemed to lose the plot, and you completely butchered the chicken after that. This is a disgrace, and Michelle will absolutely lose the plot if he saw that, you know. As for your goujons, you ran out of time. So you failed the second test. A little bit disappointed after I'd cut myself. It was downhill from there, I'm afraid. Under all the spotlight and pressure, you know, it's not easy. They were very nervous. That was a tough test indeed. 
three of them didn't even get their goujons cooked. Sam didn't have the neatest of jointed chickens, but he's the only one to have performed both tasks mm. in time. His goujons were not uniform in size, but they were cooked nicely, they were moist. I think he's through. I'd be happy for Sam to go through and cook for Michelle. I'd rather do 80 covers a night than do that again, to be completely honest with you. Next up is Bryce. The way he boned the chicken was very well done, very clean cuts. Unfortunately, he didn't keep an eye on the time. He didn't manage to get the goujons cooked, but there are three people in here that didn't get their goujons cooked. If I didn't get through to cook for Michel, um, I would be gutted beyond belief. Bryce looks and works like a pro. I, I think there's, there's something about that guy. Yeah, I agree. With Georgia, he managed to joint the chicken well, but uh, unfortunately he left the string on which is a no-no. He ran out of time, he didn't put the pan on. He could have put the pan on while he was jointing the chicken. And the size of the goujons he was trying to cook were enormous. I would feel very disappointed. I really would like to cook for Michelle. Just give another chance and then they can see exactly what I have to offer. I'm not sure, I'm not sure about yeah. him. I'd, I'd like to know what you think of Damien before we make a decision on George. He started off well, he seemed confident and knew what he was doing, but as soon as he cut himself, he just lost the plot and just panicked. He butchered the chicken after that. I'd be devastated if I didn't get through now. It was a poor effort, but I'm not sure. We've got Sam in and we've got Bryce in. Now we've got to decide between George and Damien. It's a really tough call for me. Uh, I'm very nervous having to put either one of them in front of Michelle. that's going home is Damien. Right guys, you'll be cooking for my boss, Michelle Rue. Don't let me down. I'm really, really pleased. I could have done so much better. Now I can show them what I've got. Going through to cook for Michelle is a oh, dream come true. I thought I'd blown it. So uh, I'm in the next stage and let's go. I'm so relieved that I managed to get through this round. That was the most nervous point of my life. Yeah, absolutely ecstatic. It's day two. Sam, Bryce and George are back, and this time they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To get through to the quarter-final, they'll have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. I know, for a few of you, the first round was quite a traumatic experience. But this is your chance to show off. In front of you, you have a rump of lamb. You have 50 minutes to cook two dishes, two very different dishes from that rump of lamb. I'm looking for great skills, passion, great flair. Get cooking. This is a chance for the chefs to demonstrate their versatility. They have 50 minutes to show their skill. Their larder includes celeriac, pancetta, beetroot, puy lentils, potatoes, green beans, savoy cabbage and red currant jelly. We're not looking for Michelin star standard food yet, although if we get it, great. But what we are looking for is an indication of brilliance, an indication that this chef really is going to make it. The cut of meat they've got today is rump of lamb. It's the end piece of the leg. It's a beautiful muscle. 
For me, lamb has to be cooked pink. Perfect pink, not bloody and not overcooked. If it's overcooked, ghastly. You serve me a good piece of lamb, I'm a happy boy for a number of hours. I cook for Michel Rougignard is utterly daunting. My heart's going 10 to the dozen, so I just need to give it all and just try 110%. How did you get into cooking? Uh, my grandfather, he was a general manager of a hotel in Edinburgh and he told me not to get into cooking because it's unsociable, bad pay, rubbish trade. And I've done what any other 13-year-old boy would do and just rebelled and that's how I'm here. What are you going to prepare for us? Today I'm doing roast rump of lamb with glazed celeriac, glazed beetroots and a uh, beetroot and rosemary jus. And a warm salad of uh, puy lentils and crispy bacon. Mm. Mm. Very nice. I like where you're going to. I just hope I get there. I'm very competitive. I always like to win. I always want to try my best and I want to always try and do better than someone else next to me. You took a long time to write the recipes down there. Yes. Slow start. Yes, I just wanted to know exactly what I'm doing so I don't waste any more time. Now you've had a chance to think, yes. what is it you're going to make for us? I'm going to make you two roasted lamb rolls with rosemary and blue potatoes and make a little whole grain mustard cream. Where do you see yourself in a few years' time then, George? Um, I'll be the first head chef, hopefully, to have mission stars in South Africa. It would be great if you could achieve that. I'll try my best and hopefully I'll see you soon in a couple of years' time. I think, it's, I think that's an open invite. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes! 15 minutes, that's it! What makes a great chef? Passion. Passion and the willingness to learn. You can't do it half-heartedly if you want to go to the top. Mm. That's very true. Can we ask you what it is you're going to cook for us? A uh, lamb rump with a uh, little beetroot fondant, and then I'm going to do a little sort of lentil, almost a stew, but a little bit drier. And then I'm going to do a little bit of roasted lamb rump with some celeriac puree and a little bit of sautéed savoy cabbage and make a little red currant juice. You got enough time for all of this? Always. <laughs> Today, I need to focus a lot more, block the silly little distractions out and just get on with the task ahead. Gentlemen, you have three minutes left. That's it. Three minutes, please. One minute left. Concentrate on plating up. Beautiful looking food. Time's up. Finished. Time's up. That's it. Stop. George's first dish is roasted rump of lamb with savoy cabbage, beetroot and celeriac. You started off slowly, but I'm glad to see that you did actually get two dishes cooked. It's colourful, it's vibrant, it looks appetising. Um, there's no sauce, which is a shame. I would have liked a bit more sauce in, on the plate. The lamb is actually ever so slightly overcooked, but very well seasoned. There's a lovely flavour of rosemary going through the whole dish, which works perfectly well with lamb. Not a bad effort. Thank you. Despite putting iron strong beetroot in there, the lamb more than holds its own. I enjoyed that. Enjoy the flavours, I like the textures. George's second dish is oven roasted lamb served with rosemary potatoes, glazed baby carrots and fine green beans. Right, again, I think it's sorely missing a bit of sauce. It looks dry. Honestly, I totally forgot about the sauce. Honestly, lack of time, I was concentrating on the veg and everything else. The 
The carrots and the beans look vibrant. They taste lovely as well. Lots of flavours going on in there. There's a nice flavour of rosemary. There is good seasoning on here. But the whole thing is one dimension missing. The sticky texture and the deep flavour of a sauce. You know, you've done OK. But you do realise that what we're looking for really is a step above this. And in the next round, you really are going to have to step it up. Yes, yeah, Chef. I never did a sauce. I was so disappointed with, man. The time flies. It's crazy. 24-year-old Sam's first dish is rump of lamb served on a puy lentil stew. The first thing that sort of jumps out to me is that your lamb is undercooked. Yeah. It's rare. In fact, it's very rare. When I put it in the oven, I'd actually turn the oven down to cook the beetroot fondant. I, I forgot and didn't turn the oven back up, mm -hmm. and then I didn't have time to rest it. Flash in the pan. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll take a bit of the more cooked stuff. The lentils are dry. Yes, sir. They need some sauce in there, need some moisture. Well seasoned rosemary and mint against that lamb. Really good flavours. Um, You'd have to be pretty hungry before you started gnawing on a raw lamb. Sam is now pinning his hopes on his second dish. Roasted lamb with a beetroot fondant, celeriac puree and savoy cabbage, accompanied by a red currant jus. Again, the flavours are there. Your beetroot fondant has got a lovely sweetness to it. I'm not so keen on this jus. What, what is this? That's a lump that I didn't... It's a big lump... Yeah, chef. ...of... Red currant jelly, chef. That should not happen. You should pass your sauce through a, a sieve and make sure that that lump of red currant jelly doesn't end up on the plate. Yes, chef. There is mistakes throughout your yeah. cooking. But I think you can deliver flavour. I'm impressed with your flavours. Thank you. Attention to detail that's missing. That's what we're looking for. I shouldn't have rushed so much, and I should have turned the oven back up. It's just a silly mistake that, that shouldn't have happened. Bryce has been working in professional kitchens since he was 13. He's serving his roast rump of lamb with a warm puy lentil and crispy bacon salad. Hmm, OK. Your lamb's cooked enough. The lentils are lacking that sort of depth of flavour of a dressing. Give it some zing, some life. The bacon is a little bit overcooked and I don't really think it needs those carrots and French beans. Chef. Not bad. The flavours are there, though. Flavours are good. Thank you. This is quite scruffy. And I don't believe you like the look of the plate, and that's why you've stuck an enormous big sprig of parsley on there. I don't believe you wanted me to eat that. No. Your lamb is cooked beautifully. Thank you. Beautifully. Bryce's second dish is roast rump of lamb with glazed celeriac and beetroot with a rosemary jus. I think this plate looks beautiful. Thank you. I hope that this is the real Bryce. Mmm. Mmm. Your lamb is beautifully cooked, it's pink. The jus has got this wonderful flavour of beetroot, but not overpowering. Everything that's in there works and works very well. I like this dish. Thanks, Chef. The first flavour to fill your palate is that rosemary. In comes that sweet lamb, and then in comes that big, earthy beetroot. It's got a bite to it. This is nice. These are good flavours. 
there's still a little bit of improvement to be done here. I mean, Certainly. let's not forget your first plate was not not entirely right. At the moment, I'm I'm pretty happy. I never thought I could come and cook for me children and have them enjoy my food. But I did make a couple of silly mistakes, which at this level you can't do. Well done, guys. Not a bad start at all. Good competition. When we get you back, it's a whole new test. I'm really impressed with the standard, actually. Not the finished article by any means, but some decent stuff in here. George is so laid back. I thought he was going to fall asleep there when he was writing his notes. I thought, no, you're going to pieces. But no, he wasn't. He just took a much more measured approach. George's flavours were great. I, I thought the cooking of the vegetables, spot on. Big issue, though, both dishes were screaming out for a sauce. He said he forgot about the sauce. Well, don't forget about the sauce. I should have done a little bit better. There's always the next one where I can improve and keep on striving. Sam serving up raw lamb, that is just not on. The only high point of that dish, I thought, was the seasoning of the lentils. Seasoning was good. The second dish, that lamb, was a lot better. The beetroot fondant, the roast potatoes were lovely. They were very good. A massive mistake was he had a lump of red currant jelly in there. Sam's got a lot to prove. This afternoon, I just need to pay a lot more attention to my dishes, look for the tiny little errors, because at the highest level, that's what makes the difference. Bryce is cooking. I can't fathom it out. He's a very organised chef. And that first plate of food was anything but organised. But his second dish, with the flavours and textures there, were just stunning. It looked beautiful, and it tasted really great. Of the two dishes I've done this afternoon, one good, one not so good, I just can't afford to make that same mistake again. There was absolutely no room for error in the next stage. I think we've got three good chefs here. I think they're at a good level, but can they take it that step further? The French classics are the building blocks, the foundation of gastronomy. To be a great chef, you must have a fundamental understanding of the classics. I want you to cook a classic soup and oignon, French onion soup, one of my favorites, and a chocolate roulade, or as I would call it, a roulé marquis. You have one hour and 20 minutes to complete both these dishes. At the end of this round, one of you will become a quarter finalist. Best of luck, off you go. What these classic recipes are gonna tell me about the chefs is do they have an understanding? Do they comprehend what gastronomy is all about? The soup à l'oignon originated in 18th century France and was considered a peasant dish. A resurgence in its popularity in the 1960s led to it becoming a modern classic. To make the perfect onion soup, you have to caramelize the onions just right for the sweetness of the onion to come through. Not too much, otherwise it will go bitter. The croutons have to be well toasted and covered, totally covered in cheese. To be able to take a humble onion and elevate it into such a beautiful dish. Mmm, absolutely delicious. Their second classic is Roulet Marquis, a chocolate roulade originally served to French nobility. It consists of a light chocolate sponge carefully rolled around a Chantilly cream filling. Chantilly cream is whipped cream with sugar and possibly some flavoring. Vanilla would be ideal. The secret to a great chocolate roulade is to slightly undercook the sponge. Otherwise, you won't be able to roll it properly and it will crack. It should look big and sticky. It should feel lighter than that, and at the same time, really give you that good big smack of chocolate. OK, Bryce, do you understand these recipes? I haven't done the chocolate roulade before, but I have uh, done French onion. Pins out my forte, I'll be the first to admit. But uh, I'm going to follow the recipe to the T. What do you see yourself doing in, uh, say, five years' time, then, Bryce? I'd like to be a... Uh... A strong senior member of our Michelin star team. 
and eventually um, become a head chef. So that's your goal in life? To be at the top of the tree. Uh, I'll, try, I'll try my hardest to get to it. Bryce seems very confident with onion soup. He doesn't seem that happy with his roulade. He can't deliver us one good dish again. He did that last time. You've had 20 minutes. You've got an hour left. These two particular dishes, have you cooked them before? I've cooked the wine, chef, the onion soup. But the pastry, it's my I'm first time chef. And I don't mind learning new things every day. It makes me better as a chef. What do you think we're looking for now from you? Just to see me work more organised and finish what I, what I started. Can you do it, chef? Uh, yes, I can. It's half an hour to go, and George has only just put the onions on to cook. I don't think that's going to be enough time. But he did that in the last round. He still managed to pull up tasty food. Can he do it again? You have only 20 minutes left. These particular dishes, what are you going to do extra to embellish it? I've already made a creme chantilly. Um, I'm going to fold some crushed raspberries through it. And uh, then I haven't really thought much past that, to be honest with you, Chef. Well, there's a lovely smell of vanilla, I must say. It smells good. Mm. Is there something you're keen to show us now in this round? Yeah, that I can not do those silly little mistakes that, that were in my last round. And how are you going to avoid that? Concentrate. Sam looks in control, looks like he's enjoying himself. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Can you concentrate for the full one hour and 20 minutes and get everything right? You have five minutes left. Just under two minutes. Presentation, think about it, final touches. Time's up, that's it. With a quarter-final place at stake, the chef's classic dishes need to reach the standard Michelle requires. First under scrutiny is their French onion soup. Bryce, should we start with you? Presentation-wise, lovely. It's, it's a hearty bowl of soup. I will say, though, that the croutons, they look crunchy, they look good, but there is no way near enough cheese. They should be totally covering the bread. Well, let's taste it. The onions have been sweated down and caramelised properly. There's a lot of natural sweetness going on in there. I would have no problem in... Finishing that bowl. I think you've done a very good job there. Thank well you, done. Chef. Thank you. I think the soup is a marvellous caramel colour. Let's go in. Mm, there's a depth to that, there's sweetness, and there is a little bit of acidity as well. Very nice. Good soup. Thank you. Right, Sam, first of all, is this perfectly cut round crouton out of a, a loaf of bread, which, in my view, is wrong. It should be a baguette and it should be a little bit rustic. The colour is right. I mean, it's a lovely caramelisation, but there is a, a lingering bitter bay leaf aftertaste. For that amount of soup that you were cooking, uh, one leaf would have been more than enough, Blood which is portion. four. Oh. And that's what's coming through. It's killing the flavour of the onion. Mm. 
Please. That is such a shame. Halfway through, this bitterness comes in and it stays. It really stays. Sam! Right, George, the first thing is you haven't caramelised the onions to get that lovely golden colour. Secondly, croutons should have a lot of cheese. You've only got little specks of cheese. And I've got one golden coloured and one side white. Yeah, it should be even coloured. Your onions are still crunchy, so they're not cooked enough. And there's no depth of flavour. I think you were a bit rushed on this onion soup, and it tells. It's nicely seasoned, but it's all stock because there is no sweetness coming from the onion. Look at my timing. OK, let's have a look at your chocolate roulade. Bryce, we'll start with yours. By far the biggest. <laughs> oh, God! You have chosen to present it to us whole, which is fine by me. And you have decorated it with a little bit of sugar work here, which is great. I think a dessert should have a little bit of frivolity. On the negative side, there is a crack. There's a... In fact, there's more than a crack. There's a chasm there. The sponge is too thick, and that is why it has cracked. The texture of the sponge it, is good, and uh, you can really taste the chocolate in there, the bitter chocolate. That's good. Thanks, Chef. I think the flavours, the cocoa chocolate against the raspberry, is, is really nice. I didn't quite nail it as much as I wanted to. I've tried my hardest. I just got my fingers crossed that it was enough. Right, Sam, it does look good. <laughs> mm. Wow. That's, that's very good. That melts in the mouth, it's still got it's still got a bit of texture in that roulade. Some vanilla, which really does give it another dimension. No, I'm happy with that. Thank you. That's good. There's a proper amount of cream in there, which is making the whole thing soft and moist, and it's got a sharp flavour of raspberry running through the cream. I, I tell you what, that is really nice. Maybe I missed my call and I should have been a pastry chef. Hey. Yeah, it was a very good feeling. Yeah, I was just not, not too disappointed with that. The sponge is very dense. It feels to me as if you haven't whisked the egg whites up enough and folded them in properly and there's definitely not enough cream going through it. I like your presentation. I think that looks looks nice. George, you've made us a lovely, rich, deep chocolate cake, but not a roulade. <laughs> I'm happy what I've done and I'm happy that I tried my best at least. Thank you very much, gentlemen. There have been high notes and low notes from all three of you. So we've got a lot to discuss. Off you go. George? <sighs> Takes too much time to think about what he's doing. One of George's lamb dishes I thought was very good. It was modern, it was quite elegant. The other lamb dish looked unfinished. There was no sauce, they were not a complete dish. Then we move into the classic recipes. That onion soup wasn't cooked for long enough, and although I enjoyed the chocolate cake, it was exactly that. It wasn't a roulade. I think he's got the taste. In fact, I know he has the taste, because 
everything he has produced for us had great flavours. No, he's got the right approach. He just hasn't got the necessary skill yet. He's just not ready. He's not complete. If I leave today, I'll leave saying, OK, cool, George, did your best, you didn't give up or throw in the towel. I'll just learn from it. So we're agreed. We dismiss George. This is a decision we have to make between Sam and Bryce. Sam's first dish was raw. It was almost cold in the middle. And those lentils, it was just not right. But when I tasted the second plate of lamb, I thought, this is good cooking. In the classics, I thought he did well. His onion soup was virtually perfect and he decided to stick in every single bay leaf he could find within a 20-mile radius and ended up with the most bitter, awful flavour. Such a shame. And his chocolate roulade was, I thought, top-notch. And the creme chantilly with the vanilla and the raspberries was heavenly. Mm. That guy has something. He just has it sporadically. I'd love to get through to the quarterfinals and keep cooking for Michelle because I think I could cut out the silly little mistakes and show him what I can actually do. The first thing I tasted of Bryce was a lentil dish that he tried to hide under a bush of flat leaf parsley. It lacked flavour. However, his second lamb dish, and that's where I think the real Bryce lies, was superb. I would have loved to sit down to have eaten that. Bryce's onion soup was superb. It had depth of flavour and it had the real sweetness of those onions. Spot on. His roulade uh, was, was too thick. It was almost there. I think I've shown in some areas, but there's been a couple of dishes that have let me down, so that's what's kind of worrying me at the moment. The silly mistakes that let me down might cost me a place in the quarterfinals. Which one of these two guys can stop making the silly mistakes? Who in the quarterfinal is not going to let us down? Chef going through is Bryce. Phenomenal. I'm devastated, really, but I did as well as I could on the day, and some very silly little mistakes creeped in there. I'm feeling a little bit gutted. Obviously, I would have loved to go through. This makes me want to keep on striving and I'll never stop and I'll never give up. It's just such an achievement for me. It's just a dream come true. Now, this is when the hard work starts. Bryce will be back for the quarter-final to battle it out for the title of Professional Master Chef.